Tyco Electronics introduces the all-in-one CSJ cold shrinkable joint for 15 kV and 25 and 28 kV cables. It's designed to splice tape shield, wire shield, LC shield, unishield, flat strap jacketed concentric neutral and concentric neutral cables. This video will show an installation of the CSJ on a tape shield cable using a shear bolt connector. This video does not take the place of installation instructions, but helps to illustrate the installation. Warning, when installing electrical power system accessories, failure to follow applicable personal safety requirements and in written installation instructions could result in fire or explosion and serious or fatal injuries. As Tyco Electronics has no control over field conditions which influence product installation, it is understood that the user must take this into account and apply his own experience and expertise when installing this product. Slide the splice body over the cable end so that the release strip of the spiral holdout points toward the end of the cable. Insert the conductors so that the insulation butts up with the end of the connector. Hand tighten the shear bolts so that the connector stays in place. As we can see here, we will need about 13 and a half to 14 and a quarter inches between the Semicon cutbacks for proper placement of the splice body. This is known as a fail-safe measurement. Alternately tighten the bolts with a socket wrench until the bolts shear off. Follow the tightening sequence as shown in the drawing of your installation instructions. File smooth any remaining part of the bolt that remains higher than the connector. Abrade the insulation if needed and then clean the insulation using an approved solvent. Clean and degrease the connector area. Install several turns of marking tape onto the cable semicon one and a half inches from the semicon cutback as shown. This will be a guide for installing the splice body. The tape should be installed on the same side where the splice body is parked. With a gloved hand, lubricate the cable insulation with the supplied DCC compound. Be sure to use extra compound at the Semicon cutbacks. Lubricate the connector area last. Important point, use all of the DCC compound supplied to help fill any voids and use only the compound provided in the kit. Position the splice body so that the silicone body's edge is aligned with the marking tape. Release the spiral holdout by pulling counterclockwise while holding the splice body in place. The spiral holdout cannot be pulled out all at once. Remove the black tape holding the ends of the mesh sock wires and straighten the mesh sock wires out over the cables. If using a knife, be careful not to damage the rejacketing material. Lay the copper braid over the neutral sock with the moisture block aligned with the jacket cutback. Install two turns of the spring clamp over the braid, the mesh, 
and the neutral of the cable. Fold the short end of the braid back over the spring clamp wraps as shown. Secure the spring clamp with three layers of tape wrapped in the direction of the spring clamp. Continue taping over the ends of the mesh to cover any sharp points. Install a strip of gray mastic in each jacketed cutback. Be sure to put the mastic under and over the external ground to prevent moisture ingress. Wipe any grease material off of the black rejacketing sleeve to allow for a positive grip. Twist the black rejacketing sleeve from side to side to release the grease. Slide the rejacketing tube over the ground braid and onto the cable jacket. Repeat for each side of the tube. Connect the ground braid to the system ground following your company's bonding and grounding standards.